Hello. I'm out here. Figured we finish this up. I'm getting closer. I need to make the eccentric crank, which what I'm going to do is just I have the piece already chucked up in the lathe still. I cut the part off that I drew it out for the hat part here, or the holder. I cut that part off so that it doesn't have the hole in it anymore and I'll face it, drill it for 7 16 and then I'll take the half inch shaft here, turn it down to one or two thousand oversize and press it in using the hydraulic press. I'll leave it way oversized so when I'm done I can actually face it to size and to cut the pin on it also. I need 3 eighths oh. the hole in here and the block is quarter inch wide exactly and three eighths deep so I know that I need that for the, the eccentric pin but for figuring out how much distance I need between the slider block and the bearing I just used the gauge blocks I had it set up there's 200 and 110 so that's 310 and I just slid it in between the block here and it's a real tight nice tight sliding fit so I'll do 310 or 310 thousandths and plus 375 so that is 685 thousandths put the inch block back away so that's it there I know I want a 5 8 inch stroke I figured that out last time so I'll take and chuck it up, get everything face to length and everything, then offset the chuck. 300 and. 300? Yeah, 5 sixteenths. So, I'll have to figure it out. Anyways, let's get started. the part off that I used to make the hat. It has the half inch hole in it so I'll save it off for later and use that for another project coming up. Okay, I got it 
everything chamfered and everything I cut it off down to size I had it way too long so I left a lot on because I couldn't take and get this chucked up in the saw so I just kept facing till it went down so it is a little over an inch right now so I'll have to get it down to about right there and about right there it's not too much to come off then the rest will be for the pin or for the disc that goes in between so anyways it is says 444 some places shows 445 so I think I'm going to go 446 447 and then press it in it's going to be a really really tight fit and I know it's never going to come undone so I'll turn this down to 446 it's exactly five inch or half inch right now. So get it indicated in, turn it down, and we'll press it in using the press. I think that'll be okay. It almost wants to start, so we'll go press it in. Well, here's the moment when we find out if I uh, have it too tight or too loose or if it's just going to blow up on us. My luck, it's going to blow up. We'll find out. Back it off to let it center itself again. Go all the way down in now. Turn it around so that it centers itself again. It's ever going to come off now. So, I say it's good. Now we got to trim it down to size, which is uh, 685 thousandths. It is way too long right now. It is. I got to reset these. Yeah, it's a little over an inch, so I've got quite a bit to go. I'll take and trim it down to 
thickness and then I'll set up the indicator the travel indicator and tell me exactly how far I got to go in and I'll offset this 5 16 of an inch I'll just move two of the jaws over and it'll offset it that much and then I'll just machine the pin One thousandths on, or one thousandths over. That'll be fine. Now we gotta reach, offset this five sixteenths. Okay, got it offset, and we'll get turning. Okay, after much, much trouble, I finally got it turned down. It's a nice fit on here. Nice sliding fit, but there's no play at all, as usual. So, I'll throw some oil on it, and we'll put this thing together. Alright, let's put it together here. I'll trim this down in a few. I'm just trying to get it right length and everything now. I gotta make the pulley for it still so it's not completely finished but nice sliding fit there. Just about an eighth of an inch. Once at the bottom, the stroke. everything works out okay it won't explode things I'm not going to take and have a tiltable table because I don't really need it most of the stuff I'm going to do is like doing you know, the square holes and boring bars and tool holders and stuff like that stuff that would take hours and hours with a needle file so just going without it 
And also I plan on using it with sheet metal to do, like, you drill a few holes and then it, use it to fire it out to a rectangle hole for like a power switch or something. thing fell over and bent the file so hopefully it's lined up. That's the speed you want it right there. And the battery's dead. So you don't want to run these things too fast or you'll rip the teeth right off the files. Rip everything off the files. But, all that's left to do is trim it down and put a pulley on it. Hook it up to a motor. I'm going to hook up to a sewing machine motor because I got the foot pedal that I control the speed real, real precisely. That way I can have both hands here and I can use my foot to control the speed and get in where I need to for really precise angles and stuff. But, technically die filer is done. Just need to trim it down here and yeah. I'm going to stick the other battery in real quick and I'll be back. starting the hard washer <laughs> okay I think I'm gonna call it thanks for watching see ya now I'm gonna go play with this <laughs>